guys, Mike from Model Railways Unlimited. Welcome back to part two of the building an electronic model railway controller from scratch. Now to start this episode, there's a few changes, as always. You remember I was gonna use the switch connected to the pot to have an LED work there. Well, that's been changed due to a suggestion by a friend of mine. We're actually gonna have the LED here across this rail. And then when there's output onto the track, the LED will light and if there was a short or something like that the LED would go off so that's a infinitely good idea the other thing suggested by another viewer was that sometimes these diodes protection diodes within the package are emitted so we're going to add one just to make sure on the outside of it and the other thing to include is this little electronic circuit breaker now it's a one amp device and uh, that will trip the output should an error uh, short circuit occur and that will go on the output so not quite sure where that's going to go yet the other change was i was going to use transformer and rectifier with the wo2 if you remember bridge rectifier well instead of that i've come across this um, acdc adapter and it's rated at 12 volts 500 milliamps now i've removed the smoothing capacitor from it so what it's putting out now is 12 volts unsmoothed but rectified dc at 500 milliamps so my thinking is that i will use that to power this circuit initially because um it shouldn't do too much harm then if there's any errors and uh, 12 volts 500 milliamps should be enough to run even trying locos so that's what i'm going to do with that so we'll now have a little look at the construction. Just to mention, I am observing anti-static protection. Um, I don't think there's any particularly vulnerable on this circuit, but it's always a good idea to be safe. Right, so as you can see, I've fitted some components to the Vero board already. They are just loose, however, so that we can discuss what I had to do to get them working. Now, with something like this, you want to use as little Vero board as possible but enough so that you can do everything you want to do with it and get all the connections and things. Bearing in mind the biggest thing in the box will be the heat sink. If you keep the Vero board small, that's likely to give you a chance to fit in a smaller box. How I've chosen to use it is with the conductive strips horizontal so that whatever you start with gets projected across and that's quite useful. Um, if you look at the circuit, there are a number of points, so if you look here for the positive for example, which are common. And so they will go sailing across the top there. You can see I've drawn a little line to show you how it goes. So that's the positive rail for example, sails across the top there and we can pick it up and use it as we need to. Now a very good place to start is the pins of the comparator transistor, which I've carefully made sure are in the correct place. So if you fit the transistor first on separate runs so that it's, it's completely separated, you can then fit the other components depending on their size to suit. So if we have a little look at the first part of the circuit for example, bear in mind that the adjustable pot is not fitted yet. So if we look at the base of that transistor, that's pin number two, and that's pin number two, and that connects to the 10k resistor there which goes across and will pick out a pin out there for the pot the adjustable pot now that resistor is the only one fitted horizontally now the problem with that is on the back of the board you can see where i've made the green mark there that at the moment a resistor wouldn't be anything because it would just carry on straight through it so we've got to break the track there to make that resistor valid and a simple way to do that is using a large drill fit it over one of the holes and just twist and then give it a little clean up to make sure that there is no conductivity at all through there now. I think the camera is showing that. You see this? I've broken the track and now that resistor will be valid. So that's the first thing to mention. Oh, that's popped out. 
Uh, what I had to do, because the pins on these diodes are quite, because I'm using oversized diodes, because simply I had them in stock and it wasn't worth buying more. I had to use a small drill to open out the holes in the Vero board to take the big diodes. So what we'll need to do when we solder up is to make sure we get a good blob of solder right the way around so that the track is continuous and uh, conducts nicely as we want it to. The LED, which will be here, and it's 1K resistor, as you can see it drops down from there into the LED and down to 0 volts. I'm going to fit it to the board initially, it will come out to the front of the case on the controller um, but just for testing it's going to be fitted there. So you can see here we've got the protection diode again for that transistor. Now the big transistor, the mixed package, which is going on that heatsink, will not be on this board I've decided. It will be mounted somewhere else in the case. So I have its pinouts, so we've got one, two and three marked out there and I'll be using PCB pins to have wires go to the correct legs on that transistor and the same pinouts will be PCB pins will be used for naught volts and um, when the when I fit the pot which will just go down here that will also be done with pins so I think what I'll do now is solder a few things up so that it's all stable and then we'll come back and discuss where we've gone Okay, welcome back. So the soldering has been done. Let's see if it's going to focus for us on that. And all the legs have been trimmed off. So it's nice and neat. So now we come to the little PCB pins. Now we have to identify where we want them. So we want one just up here, for example. Just on the edge. Push it partly in. And then with your soldering iron, just put some pressure on it and you'll find it will push in. Once your pin's in, all you need to do is overflow it with a bit of solder. That is now part of the circuit. And you can see now we've got a convenient place to solder on the input from the transformer now. So I'll fit all the other pins and we'll come back and take right, it. So we now have all the pins in place. And uh, on this side, we've got positive in, negative in. And here we've got the, also the connections for the potentiometer, because remember, it sits between the positive and negative, but it's 22K, so it's not a problem. And then the wiper of the pot goes through this to the 10K resistor into the voltage comparator transistor. So the next job is to cut some wires for the pot and transistor so that we can test it. Right guys, everything's wired in. There's the pot and its connections. And as you see, they're shared between positive and negative input. And then there's the output from the wiper that goes through to the comparator. That, just for simplicity, is the resettable 1 amp fuse. I've left the switch off for now. Um, again, for simplicity, whilst we look at everything. Here is the power transistor all connected up. As you can see, his base is going through there to the output from comparator. His collector is then connected to positive, and then it's his emitter giving us our feed, which goes to our track output. And so it's the big time now when we switch on and see what happens, and hopefully there isn't a great big puff of smoke. And the first thing we want to see is a nice voltage appear on the voltmeter there. So, without further ado, I shall quickly apply the voltage and we'll see what happens. Right, so we've got a voltmeter. And we haven't got variance, so there's a problem. I'll quickly disconnect everything. Well, welcome back. So, I've spent some hours going through the circuit trying to find the mistake that I must have made. Carefully examining the circuit diagram. And then I thought, well, I wonder if the tip 147 
power transistor um, was in some way wrong. So I looked it up and here is the configuration of the TIP147. So the problem was that the connector and emitter were swapped and uh, that was discovered having looked at the actual details of the device. Um, it's drawn differently on the diagram here if you can see. Um, so that's where the confusion with the pinouts came from but anyway it now works absolutely fine and I've just shown the extra diode that was suggested to go across the circuit there uh, that's just in case that hasn't been included within the TIP 147 package um, I suspect it may have done but it's always a good idea to include extra protection got our 1k ohm resistor and indicator LED that will get brighter as you turn up the power and should there be a short circuit or anything like that it would go out suddenly I think pretty much we're there that's the pinouts for the VC107 the comparator transistor so Let's just make sure that when we turn the pot, a little red LED glows. We've got the oscilloscope next to it, and what we have here is a Trying M7 that's been in store for the last five years. It's dry as a bone. Um, so we'll see what this controller can do. I'll gradually increase the speed. Oh, wow. I wasn't expecting that. You can see we've got our 100 hertz ripple there. Let's just turn it, stop it, and do that again in case it was a fluke. Oh my lord! How cool is that? And despite the reduced input, that's plenty of speed. And a quick look at the firebox flow inside, flowing nice with it. Oh, I don't want to do too much because, as I say, she is bone dry. But <laughs> that's incredible. Now then, let's have a feel. No, that's nice and cool. Okay, let's swap her over. So what we have here, representing a modern locomotive, is the usual uh, test layout shunter. So let's just increase the power. And there's no buzzing or anything, which you might get from a can motor. Obviously it could turn a speed. And it's on a rolling road, which is, you know, never that easy on locos. Pretty impressive and relatively simple really so I think the next part will be putting this all into a nice neat box mounting the control knob on the lid making it all nice and tidy and then we'll do some actual running testing downstairs on the main layout so stay tuned for part three